I've had lots of emails from many of you asking if I've been trumped, referring to the US president censoring from social media channels, including YouTube, of course. And well, I can put your minds at rest there. I absolutely haven't been trumped. They kind of get me to shut me big gob, man. I, I took a break from posting daily videos, sometimes as many as three a day, to work on myself and frankly, to admit that I needed help. To admit that it's all right actually to to ask for that um i've struggled i'm going to be honest with you i've struggled with my mental health since adolescence after what i think it's safe to say was years of a pretty volatile home and school life and during the first two of those lockdowns i think like most people whenever anyone would ask how i was doing you know working from my bedroom at home I would have answered that I was absolutely fine for the most part I would have said that I was more concerned with those who you know aren't as fortunate as I am those unable to uh, work from home and those propelled into financial and mental misery uh, whether they you know they might suffer from domestic violence at home those who will be uniquely impacted by the go-to lockdown strategy and by the what will be economic scarring and the lost life chances thanks to the jobs that will be destroyed or have been destroyed and in that first lockdown I started running outside for the first time and things like that I started I along with others was quite happy gorging myself on a diet of Tiger King and you know I downloaded that house party app to keep in contact with friends and family over a virtual drink or, or six <laughs> And the novelty of all of that, though, I think I, I, I speak for many people when I say the novelty of all of that has absolutely worn off this time around. And depression and anxiety are skyrocketing with it. And it's, it strikes me that during this third lockdown, you know, it's the bleakest of winters. It's bloody ice cold out here. And I, I think it's just bleak in, in every sense, really, this time around. And I've always thought that there was a grain of truth to the argument, you know, that my generation are complete snowflakes. That when they argue that older generations have had it easy, they don't realise just how hard older generations actually had it as far as the winter of discontents concerned, sky-high inflation, wars even, crap housing and all the rest of it. They had a pretty hard time and no great access to many of the fruits of modernity that my generation enjoy today. And I think that's all true. But I do think this, it's hard to argue that whilst young people aren't susceptible to the virus, they very much are casualties of the lockdown strategy. And, you know, I'm hopeful that if any good is going to come out of this sorry saga in which we've accepted, I think, the kind of infringements on our freedoms and liberties that we never thought you'd be able, or at least I certainly never thought you'd be able to get away with in a Western democracy such as ours, that sort of champions the, what the, that British flag represents, freedom and liberty around the world. It's, if there's anything to good to come from this, I think it should, it could be, and I hope it will be, that we do away with the stigma, the shame that's attached to mental health and see it become a relic of the past. Because currently, as things stand, I've heard that NHS waiting lists are up to six months to receive treatment for crippling anxiety, depression, personality disorders, you name it. Many of these things can be completely debilitating, life-threatening even, and hamper an entire workforce. I mean, can you imagine? Imagine for a moment, if you were to read of someone with a broken leg not receiving treatment for the said broken leg for six months, we would rightly think that that was an unacceptable ask, an unacceptable amount of time for someone to wait. And I think it's about time that we valued mental health equally with physical health instead of just giving flowery, nice rhetoric about doing so. And now, I'm not really interested in getting into the arguments about the efficacy of lockdowns right now, which, by the way, proponents of these things will accuse me of weaponizing mental health in order to make a case against lockdowns. But I'm absolutely not. I'm not interested in 
whether or not the lockdown strategy is absolutely necessary or for this particular video. I'm, I'm interested in the impact it's having upon the mental well-being of the nation and ensuring people know that they're absolutely not alone. Know that if you recognise these the feelings, you're, you're definitely not on your own. I mean, figures from the Centre for Mental Health suggest that 10 million people will need new or additional mental health support. And they've revealed that those with existing mental health conditions are going to be particularly vulnerable. And none of this, I think, should be remotely surprising, right? Humans are social creatures. For us, solitary incarceration, being de facto caged alone. We've been pushed into our own little realms. Our anxieties, justifiable or not, rational or not, have been completely amplified. And this is especially true, I think, for the young, who uniquely hit by the, the impact of, of lockdown. And the, the strategy itself has left more than 50% apparently of young people saying that since COVID, they always feel anxious. With one in five of the under 25s actually saying that they feel unable to cope with life altogether. And that's rhetoric I think that should frankly terrify all of us. You know, the young are the future of the British economy, the stability of the nation, and the future of our success, let's not forget. And it's not hard to see why that's the case when the link between unemployment and mental health is so blatantly obvious. The evidence is there, it's palpable. And some of the biggest names on our high streets have, you know, shut up their shops for good, shedding hundreds of thousands of jobs, leaving young people unable to get on that first step of that ladder of opportunity feeling hopeless and, and that the rest of their lives are going to be blighted and that's hardly surprising you know we've experienced the worst recession in 300 years leading to predictions that we'll have at least two decades of wage stagnation so you know that's young people's actual money in their pocket not going up for that period of time and all of this is worsened by ministers government ministers who change the rules at the last possible moment in response to events that take place on Twitter or who refuse to give an end date to our latest lockdown and forget that they need to give people hope. You know, in pursuit of minimising the impact of one disease, we've exacerbated the impacts of others, you know, whether that be, I don't know, heart issues or cancers and, and of course, ultimately mental health illnesses. So in a rush to protect the vulnerable, we've forgotten about our duty of care to society's other vulnerable groups. We've propelled an entire nation and generation even into financial and mental misery. And I would just ask the government to remind themselves that they need to offer us that hope. They need to offer us stability as much as possible. And they need to, I think, let us know that this too shall pass. And I'm convinced that we must never ever do this again, folks. But more importantly than that, more importantly than one man's views on the lockdown strategy, I want you to know that if any of you are feeling like this applies to you, you are absolutely not alone. There are organisations like Minds, Charity, The Prince's Trust and a whole host of other websites, forums and helplines that you can reach out to. And please, please do not suffer in silence. Reach out and admit that you need help if you feel like you do because my friends life is short and precious and you are important and you matter just as much as someone likely to suffer the effects of the virus make sure you get outside even though you're absolutely freezing your tits off like i am <laughs> try and do some exercise remember that there's no such thing as bad weather just the wrong clothing which reminds me i should have put some bloody gloves on my hands are like ice cubes and i've bought myself a seasonal effective disorder lamp that brightens up gradually to wake us up with a nice bright light and soothing sounds too. It's supposed to help, you know, release some serotonin and get you up with a spring in your step. So be kind to yourself because this is all a bit shite and it's all right to feel a bit shite once in a while. We'll get through this, we always do. And anyway, I'm sending you lots and lots of love and hopefully an explanation as to why I've not been as active recently. And we'll be back. We'll all be fine again, and I'll see yous next time.